Right. Amen. So we're going to get into our lesson tonight. We're talking about the evil powers of Delilah. We already discussed about Jezebel and Athaliah. We discussed about how the enemy uses those those threefold cord, which, which the first two is Jezebel, who was a manipulating controller, who seized the throne illegally. Her granddaughter, I mean, her daughter done the same thing. Athaliah, when her son was killed, she took the throne illegally. So she can rule the reign and, 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 and incite rebellion as well as idolatry among the children of Israel. And that's the very thing that's happening today is that so many people are inciting rebellion in the church because of the weakness of the heart. When the heart is not being converted and heart by not being changed, the people are not going to turn from their wicked ways and seek the face of God. But they're going to continue to seek the things that gratify their flesh. And God wants us to really pay attention that's about the kingdom of God being revealed in our heart and our lives. Amen. Can you hear? Let's see. If sound is on right now, send me a message. You can hear me. Amen. He's saying there's no sound. Huh. That's weird because the sound is on. Hmm. Let me see something. Yeah, the sound is on on my end. This is weird. Let me see something. Testing one, two, one, two. Yeah, the sound is on. I just tested on the computer. The sound is on. Make sure your uh, speaker's turned up on your phone. I just tested from the computer show on the live that I have on here and it is it does have sound on here. Amen. We're gonna get through this tonight. One way or another. Let me see some. Let me check some notes. Okay, what about now? How's it come across now? Let's turn it up. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Thank you, Robin. God bless you, my sister. Amen. 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 Praise God. All right. Okay, good. Beautiful. That's why I want to make sure the song coming across. Y'all missed my song I was singing earlier. <laughs> I'm about to do it again, probably towards the end, but it's uh, I Give You My Heart by Hill Songs. But as we I was discussing a second ago, is that um, Jezebel and her daughter both were wicked people who operated under the spirit of witchcraft. And the enemy used them to incite rebellion as well as manipulation and mind-binding spirits and controlling spirits among the children of Israel to hold them in captivity and make them idol worshipers to turn against their own God. And we have to realize how important it is as a child of God to know that you're anchored in Christ Jesus. In spite of what tests and trial comes in your life, we should not allow people to pull us from our faith in Jesus Christ. We all have been called out of darkness to the marvelous light, the word says. And if you know you've been called out of darkness, it's up to you to really have that balance and that foundation in your heart from the word of God. And knowing that the power of the Holy Spirit is at work in you to fulfill the call of God on your life in spite of the trials and the tests and tribulations we go through. One thing I found out, when you are walking right before God, what this say on my shirt? Pray, pray, and pray. We got to keep praying because the more you pray, tax are going to come. The more you seek God's face, enemy will try to test you. When you're being tested, he's trying to steal your faith. And the more he tries to steal your faith, he tries to steal your hope, 
your ambition, your desires, your passion for the things of God to get you into a dark place. As we talked about before, the mind binding spirits, the demonic structure, the enemy builds in our mindsets to hold us in captivity. A lot of God's people in church are stuck in an elementary stage of immaturity and have not even grown to where God was trying to mature them to be in their Christian walk because they do not study the Word of God. They're not spending time in God's presence. They're not seeking His face. So when the enemy comes into their life, any way he wants to come to create havoc and confusion in their life, they fall for it. And God is trying to get us to be aware. He said, think it not strange when the fiery darts come to try your faith. Because the enemy comes to test you. He got to test you because he knows that he can test your faith. He can get you to stop trusting in God. If you stop trusting God, you give the enemy the power to control your life and your destiny. And when God gave me that revelation, he said, even though those things happen in our life to throw us off balance sometimes, he uses those things that the enemy does to us as stepping stones to build and build and build you up higher and higher and higher in his presence. Okay. But we don't see it because we're focused on the issues. When you turn your focus on God and stop giving in to the voice of the enemy, you will hear the Holy Spirit telling you, keep going forward, keep pushing, keep pushing forward. Don't quit. Hold on to God's hand. Stand fast on the word of God because the word is your anchor and your foundation. And the more you have the word of God in your spirit, I thank God that I know the word of God to where when the enemy comes to test and try me and attack me any way he chooses, the word always validates yes, the calling on my life. Yeah. I have our elder Deborah on the night too on our Google on Google Meet. So if anybody else want to join Google Meet, just click the link on the uh, Facebook post I, I, I put on there earlier and you can come into Google Meet to ask questions and comments. However, the enemy knows if I can distort your vision We've been talking about on our radio program concerning um, the attacks of the enemy and spiritual warfare and how to even handle the, the battle that's waged against us because every day a child of God is in a battle. Mm. When you wake up in the morning, you must prepare your mind, your heart, your body, your soul, your will, your emotions to realign itself with the Holy Spirit so when I leave my house, I'm covered with anointing. Even you have to anoint your head with oil before you walk out your door. You cover yourself with the purpose and power of God to go before you so the angels will lead God and direct you through the day. So even when you do face oppositions, your response will be seasoned with salt and grace. Amen. Amen. That is so powerful because the word tells us to let your conversations be seasoned with salt and with grace. And when you are faced before your accusers, God said the Holy Spirit will speak for you. But the problem comes in, we don't listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We listen to the reasons of the flesh. <laughs> Every time I go through an attack, I learn how, and I'm still learning every day, to have discipline in my mouth. Because the mouth is the weapon the enemy uses against yourself to create havoc and problems in other people's lives. If I engage in a negative conversation, that conversation would go out, out balance and be outlandish because I gave power to the enemy in my words. Amen. Oh my God. When you really realize the power you have in your tongue, James talked about it in James chapter 3, I believe, is when he talked about the taming the tongue. So let the Holy Spirit put a bit in your mouth and a bridle on your tongue. You know what that is? You've seen a horse and carriage downtown in Milwaukee or any other city on television. They got a bit with a piece of metal, a, a rod in their mouth. That's a bit. And then they have they have the rod. He said, keep the, you know, he said the, bit, the bit in your mouth. And, 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 and bridle on the tongue because what God does, He bridles the tongue where the, the, the rider can control the destiny of the horse. Mm, yeah. The Holy Spirit puts a bit and a bridle on our tongue so He can control our conversation. But we don't give in to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Somebody tick you off, push your wrong buttons, 
the first thing you do is allow your mouth to fly off the handle. And, that's true. and that is out of order with God. Yes, and God is trying to teach us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Whatever you allow your belly to be filled with is what's going to come out of your mouth. Mm. Jesus made it clear it's not what goes in a man that defiles him, but what comes out of you that makes you corrupt. Yes. You have the power to control your mouth. You don't believe that? Look at the word. Because if Jesus spoke the word when he had been tempted in the wilderness, he could have said any other thing to, de to defeat the enemy. But instead, he showed us the example. If I use the word of God, it says the tongue is a little member and it boasts its great things. Yes. The yes. tongue can set a force of fire. Yes, it can. He said, it is the same mouth come blessings and cursings. Yes. So it's up to you to make a decision in yourself that I'm not going to allow the enemy to control my mouth. Amen. Amen. If you allow the enemy to control your mouth, you tell the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to listen to you right now. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. I'm, I'm going to say what's in my heart, whether it's right or wrong. I'm going to say it anyway. I found out something recently. Whenever the enemy comes to attack you, which he's going to come. Every day he's going to come. You do not have to respond the way he attack you. That's true. You can That's be true. proactive versus real. You got a question or comment, Elder Deborah? No, I'm just agreeing with you. You're so right about that. That's right. Because we have the choice to either be proactive or reactive. Mm -hmm. If I react according to the standards of the enemy, I take the power in my own hand to fight my battle. Amen. However, if I give in to the voice of the Holy Spirit, every time the enemy comes, the Lord will put a scripture in your mind and it come out of your mouth before you realize <laughs> you're speaking a word in a negative situation. <laughs> Look at something. Go to Psalms. Let me put this up on the screen. Psalm, I think it's Psalms. Psalm book two, book two, I think it is. Uh, two. Okay. Let me look at something here. I, I saw something earlier today, and uh, let's see if it's gonna come up on my screen. Give me one second. Let me do this here. I'm gonna pull this up because this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good tonight. It's good already. <laughs> I, I know God is doing something in His Word, and we have to really be paying attention to the, how the enemy comes to attack our faith, because He knows that I can stop and distort you from seeing what God has for you to do in your life and start walking in your purpose and calling, he can distract you from walking the way God wants you to walk upright and justly before him. Okay, go to Psalms 2. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Give me one second. Put this on the screen. Okay, he says, Psalms 2, beginning at verse 1. So why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Vain is something that's empty, that's futile, has no substance, no power. Right. The kings of the earth sets themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord yes. and against his anointed. Ain't that something? saying, let us break the bands asunder and cast away their courts from us. So in other words, they're plotting for your demise. Yeah. They're looking for a reason to stop you from walking in your purpose, your calling. I don't know why my screen, screen glitching. Just ignore the glitch. I don't know why it's glitching. I don't even know Yeah, it's glitching on here. It's, it's a problem with the system tonight. But we don't go on anyway. Because the devil is a lie. Amen. But then it says, he, he that said this, in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. And what that means, <laughs> your enemy is plotting for your demise, and God says, I'm going to cause confusion to come among them. So when you trust in God's word, in spite of what's going on, 
God says, you ain't going to worry about this battle. I'm going to fight it for you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cause your enemy to, to come to naught. But then he says, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. That means just disgust. It just brings a, a bitter taste to God. Mm -hmm. Cause him to, to be roused to anger. Some of the displeasure means distasteful. And God says, Yet have I set my king upon his holy hill of Zion. Verse 7, I will declare the decree. The Lord is saying to me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now this is in reference to Jesus Christ. And this is King David talking. But God uses David as a synonymous representation of Jesus in the earth at this time because he always referenced everything in the Psalms back to Christ right he right. says ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen nation for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession so everything you need God says don't worry about the enemy don't worry about it I'm going to take care of it. now go to Psalms 3 verse 1 Psalms 3, verse 1. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Right. Have we felt that way sometime where like everybody coming against you, and when you turn, this person gets you, that person gets you, that person gets you. Everybody trying to attack you at one time. Yeah. And David cried out, because we gotta learn the same thing. Your heart posture needs to be so connected to God even in the midst of an attack to tell God many of they that had come against me mm -hmm. this is here verse 2 many of they that be and say of my soul there's no help for him in God so many increase that trouble me they say there's no help for you in God yeah but then David got a revelation <laughs> but thou verse 3 but thou O Lord art a shield for me yeah my glory and the lifter of my head. So David understood just because the attacks are coming. Remember I said this a while ago that when you trust in God he becomes a shield around about you. He becomes a fortress around you. So that death structure enemy trying to put in your mind to hold you in captivity is broken has no power, no substance to it because God takes control of you and hides you in his fortress, his protection. To the words of the name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous run into it is safe. Mm. So David said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice and he heard me out of his holy hill. Who are you crying to tonight? All right. <laughs> Who are you looking to for help? Yeah. When I was faced with opposition and attack from every side, I knew that I could run to the hills when cometh my help. My help comes to the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Listen to this, verse 5. This is what David, he's showing you exactly what you need to do to deal with your enemy. Verse 5, he says, I lay me down and slept. I awake, for the Lord sustained me. You know what he's saying? I didn't have to worry about the enemy. I can lie down in peace knowing that the Lord has been my protector. Amen. He's been my shield. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you, when you praise God and you give God the glory, you set an ambush against your enemy who rise against you with the word of God. Amen. Then he says, verse 6, I will not he didn't say anybody else. Talking about the, the contentment of his heart. What are you trusting in? What are you standing on? Are you relying on God's defense system? So I would not be afraid of 10,000 of people. Yes. He said thousands. That means many thousands. That have set themselves against me round about. <laughs> When you know that you're secured in Jesus Christ, I can lay down to sleep in peace 
And knowing that God can sustain me, he kept me, he provided me protection, he shielded me, my house, my possessions. When no evil came near my dwelling, no, no plague came near my tent, God says everything that he trying to do, I throw it at the plan of the enemy because I'm God, your protector. But then he says, verse 7, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. <laughs> Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone. <laughs> Talking about a slap, let God slap you. He'll slap you right. He'll slap the enemy out the way. Because he says, You have smitten all my enemies. He didn't say some of the enemies, but the thousands who rose against me, the naysayers, the haters, the backstabbers, the gossipers, the liars, the thieves who came against you. He said, He's smitten them all on the cheek. All right, now. Let's Thou has broken the teeth of the ungodly. He made them a mute. <laughs> <laughs> he broke the teeth of your enemy when he can't bite you, can't devour you. He silenced the voice of the enemy. But then He'll he says, it. yes, he will. He'll do it. He'll do it. He says, salvation belongs unto the Lord. Thy blessings is upon thy people. You hear that? Yeah. Your salvation, your deliverance, your protection, your strength, your comfort is all relying in the salvation of God. Amen. And his blessings will be upon you and everyone connected to you. That's when you know I was telling somebody that yeah today mm -hmm. about you know with the late president I said you know what the word of God said I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed big for bread I said everything that's attached to me you're going to be alright oh yeah what I say after the swelling go down they'll be alright <laughs> that's right <laughs> once the swelling go down they'll be alright I like that I like that <laughs> God had to speak to me and, and, and sometimes comically so I can deal with the things that hurt me sometimes. Right. Because if you don't get laughed in your heart, you're going to get miserable. That's true. I love that. The word tells you a merry heart does good like a medicine. Yes, yes. So you need some medicine in you tonight. Get in the word of God. Start Amen. laughing at your enemy. Amen. Say you thought you got the victory. You thought you gained ground over me. You thought you was going to rise above me and conquer me. But my God, my God has silenced the voice of me. He smitten them on the cheek and he broke the teeth of the wicked. And, and, and God promises because I trust in him, yeah. all the blessings will flow into my life and everyone yeah. connect to me. Everything connected. That's right. Hallelujah. Go to Amen. Judges chapter 6, 16. Amen. Judges 16, verse 4. Sixteen. Judges 16, verse 4. We're going to get into our lesson tonight. And I pray that it really bless you tonight because we, we are going to engage in a conversation tonight dealing with Delilah, the granddaughter of Jezebel. The granddaughter was just as wicked as her mother. And just as conniving and deceptive as her mother. And she also was one of those that were trying to build a death structure in your life to pull away your strength and your power. And we'll find out in conversation how she got a hold to one of God's servants who was a Nazarite named Samson. Yes. The Nazarites, they were given a vow to be devoted to God, would not to drink anything of wine, nor cut their hair. No, right. cut their beards. They were to live a holy and an upright life before God. Right. Not to break the law of God, but to be devoted to serving God wholeheartedly. That's right. Then it says, and it came to pass. Let me go to my Bible one second. Give me one second. Go back to the scripture in the Bible because this is really good tonight. Because this is going to bless somebody tonight. Judges chapter 16. I'm going to start at verse 1. 
verse 16. Judges chapter 1, verse 16. It says, Then Samson went to Gaza and saw there a harlot and went into her. And it was told that the Gazarites saying that something is come hither and they compassed him in and laid wait for him all night in the gates of the city and were quiet all night saying in the morning when it is day we, we shall kill him now this is the enemy plotting against Samson I'm about to take this Bible off the screen it's not working right on the computer I'm just going to just put the camera up here right now and I just read it from the Bible I hope you got your Bible following along but it says Verse 3, and Samson lay till midnight and rose at midnight and took the doors of the gates of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulder and carried them up to the top of the hill that was before Hebron. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, mm -hmm. name whose name was Delilah. Now Sorek was a place near the near, near Philistine. It's one of those cities near near Philistine. And this is where, De, where Samson was at this time, and this was Delilah was. So, and the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her entice him mm -hmm. and we see wherein is great strength where his great strength lies and by what means may we prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him and we'll give thee every one of us 1100 pieces of silver mm -hmm. isn't that something yes, they're plotting for his demise he's not aware of it yeah because he's taunting and playing with the enemy. You cannot play with the enemy and not expect to be bitten by the enemy. That's true. You, you don't believe it? Look at Adam and Eve. Yeah. Because they didn't take authority when the enemy came in the garden of Eden. The enemy came in and thwarted the plan of God for their lives in the garden of Eden. And, the, and because of that, we all became sinners and born into the world of iniquity because of this very act of disobedience so here's what we're going to do tonight we're going to discuss this some more because this is going to be really good I pray this really bless you tonight and really touch your spirit because God wants to speak to us by divine revelation his word tonight to empower us listen to this in chapter 1 we learned of the threefold accord attacking the church right so we've been teaching this book for the last several eight months, probably eight, eight months now. We have studied two of the most powerfully seducing strongholds named in the Bible. The last to expose is the spirit of Delilah. Delilah is the third part of the threefold court that tries to build death structures over us. Mm -hmm. You understand that? The death structure. It's a mind-binding spirit, as we discussed in previous lessons. What it does, it builds a fortress of rebellion, a fortress of iniquity, a fortress of idolatry, a fortress of sin in your heart, which resonates in the mindset. So what the enemy does, he puts this in your mind to hold you in captivity to where you cannot see yourself free so you allow yourself to be victimized by the enemy and stuck in the cycle of darkness. When you're in a dark place, all you see is darkness. That's true. There's no light in darkness. I don't care how much you try to put light in darkness, it's not going to stay there long. You can use a flashlight in darkness. Eventually, light going to burn out. You light a candle. You light a match in darkness. The light is going to go out eventually because it's not designed to stay in, in darkness for a long time. A child of God, this is Revelation somebody tonight. A child of God 
who has come to the light of truth has not been designed to maintain a status in the darkness. The enemy knows if I can victimize you to deceive you from seeing the light in your heart, I can keep you in the dark place to build this structure in your mindset of darkness. So everything that's of sin and iniquity that's not born of faith keeps you in darkness. The word tells us anything that's not of faith is sin. So if I don't have faith in my heart to maintain the freedom from being victimized by the darkness, guess what I do? I give power to the enemy to hold me in captivity. The word tells us we have been born into a new, new life, new nature. And therefore, when Christ died, we died with him. When he rose again to new life, we were risen with him into this new life and then walk in it. Amen. How do I walk in a new life? I have to identify what is an obstruction in my life that's preventing the light from shining clear in my heart. Who has a revelation right there? Amen. There's an obstruction. Amen. You know, for example, I'm going to give you something practical. Obstruction. You eat a lot of greasy foods. Okay? A lot of fast foods. You eat and devour all this stuff. You know it's not good for your system. What's going to happen? Eventually, your arteries going to start building cal cal what is it? calcium. Build calcium in your arteries, your main arteries. And the calcium begins to build and build and build so it creates a blockage. So once the blockage is in your arteries, it starts preventing the blood flow, which causes other medical issues to affect the kidneys, the liver, the batter, everything about you begins to deteriorate and fall apart because there's an obstruction. When the enemy does the same thing in you, put a spiritual calcium in your bloodstream from the blood of Jesus from flowing through your body, it obscures the light from shining in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is your deliverance. He's the one that has the power and the ability to bring you out of darkness into the light. Got any questions? Anyone got any questions on here tonight? I'm, I'm looking at the live. I'm watching y'all too. If y'all type anything, I'm looking at it. Thank you everybody for tuning in too. God bless you. So however, what the enemy does, he builds a death structure through darkness. So when the darkness comes, it prevents you, listen to this, from seeing who you are. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> the enemy does not want you to see who you are. He wants you to be blinded from your identity. He wants you to pull you from your character. When you get out, out of order with God, he wants you to get to the place where your integrity is challenged. That means you're loyal and dependent on God. So you start slipping away from God. Listen to this. God, God spoke to me earlier today. Because of the human nature, we're going to sin. You can no way around it. Because you're human. However, the difference between a righteous person when they fall into sin, we have an advocate <laughs> called Jesus Christ who forever liveth and abideth to make intercession for you to create you in righteousness all over again. So even though I might slip off the pathway and get into darkness, the righteousness of God restores me as if I never fallen. Only, Only when I come to repentance. That's right. <laughs> if I don't come to repentance, yes. I cannot receive the grace of God to forgive me. Okay, question. Go ahead. Question. When I first got back into the church, Yes. There was a lot of teaching on fornication, adultery, marriage, and all that type of stuff. Yes. Um, my question was that. What's the question? I'm trying to think about what it was. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Here it was. Um, even though a person is still in a fornication, adultery situation, my, when I was in that world and was trying to come out of that lifestyle, and I was still weak. Yes. They would tell me to just ask God to strengthen me in that area, even though I hadn't got 
totally delivered, but ask God to strengthen me and to hold me in okay. that area. Okay. So what that is... Because I'm not delivered yet, I'm asking God to strengthen right, me. Right, right. So okay. here, here's the answer to that. Yeah. When you come to salvation, I learned this from my father when I was 16 years old. He says there's three stages of salvation. Write it down. The three stages of salvation. The first one is to initially come to Jesus Christ, receive salvation through repentance. Okay. The second stage is progressiveness of salvation. Okay. That means every day I'm being delivered from the sin nature. So it's a process by studying the word of God, fasting and praying, seeking the face of God, turning from the desires of the flesh by submitting. The word tells us, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll do what? Flee from you. He'll flee from you. Right. If there is no submission, there will not be any deliverance in our hearts to resist the enemy. Deliverance comes from resisting. The enemy's okay. temptation, trials, and tests. Yeah. So the ultimate stage of salvation is when Christ comes to gather his church, his bride, and take them to glory. I'm fully saved in that time. Because okay. now the church has been purified. The church has been brought into unity, unification. The church has become one in Christ Jesus. Okay. So it's a process. Every yeah. day we're going through the process of being delivered. That's why I said we're going to sin, but we have an advocate. Who continues to intercede for us. That okay. You fell in this area. But that's okay. The blood of Jesus cleans you from that. Or you fell over here. That's okay. The blood of Jesus cleans from that. You fell over there. The blood of Jesus cleans from that. So the blood never stopped working. That's why the song says. The blood still works. Yeah. Yeah. The blood still works. Yes. Yeah. The blood still works. It will never lose its power. The blood still works. So you get the revelation That's it right there. that the blood still works. You just gave me my answer. Glory to God. Glory I tell you, God. when you get the revelation that the blood still works, it never, ever, ever, and neither will. Lose his power. I got it. <laughs> so I can fall. That way he said a righteous man. Y'all hear this now. I fall is seven times. Yeah. You know it's seven. We talk about it all the time. Completion. Seven yeah. is completion. Right. So my completion in falling is the seventh time. Yeah. In the natural, I fall more than seven times. But God yeah. says, nope. In the seventh time, in the spirit. You have fallen. You completed the process of falling. Okay. And God delivers you. He restores you. He revives you. He lifts you up as if you never fallen. He said, that way he said, righteous men fall the seven times, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. Thank so you. the all is over the hundred to two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, a thousand, ten thousand times that I'm falling. God said, that's all. Everything is in all. But the blood has cleansed you from all sin. Yeah? So if the blood cleansed all sin, that all the times I've fallen, the thousands of times I've fallen, God says the blood still covered that too. <laughs> I tell you, I preach myself happy tonight. <laughs> I don't need you. You just asked my <laughs> Because we, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's deep. <laughs> now, now, all this didn't come overnight. Let me tell you all that. It didn't come overnight. It I came mean, through many years of studying God's word. Many yeah. years of preaching God's word. I've been in ministry 40 years. So I preached 40 years. Yeah. So in the process of preaching for 40 years, God still give me revelation. To this Amen. very day, I'm still learning. So we're going to ever right. keep learning and come to the knowledge of truth. That's right. So the more I keep learning... The more revelation I keep getting to share with God's people, the more power God gives me to overcome the attacks in my own body. That's right. I'm not exempt. I'm not exempt. I'm not like you. That's we human. Right. We are gonna fall. Mm. And the thing, the thing, I'm gonna say this too. God bless you, cousin Tim. 
God bless you and condolences to your families, Marcus. God bless you. I pray God continue to cover your family and bring you through this time of sorrow and pain. And I know it's hurting you. Your brother lost your brother, but I know God's going to carry you. But the revelation, in addition to this, that God gave me, even as a leader, we're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. We're going to be tricked up, hung up, jacked up like anybody else. But in the process, in the process. of any time I made a mistake, God says, as long as you have a repentful heart, don't allow the enemy put you in condemnation. The I condemnation. Go ahead. I dealt with that when I came to where I'm at now. Yes. I dealt with that from my old, you know, people with the, made me feel unworthy. Yeah. I got that week they made me fill out for the answer. I said, well, can I teach something? Are you sure you ready? Right. Ask some questions like they compared my life to somebody else's life. You can't do that. And you know, you're right. You're right. I, can't, I was broken. I mean, that church told me apart, but I knew there was a God. And, and when you know the word of God in and Romans, let's see, Romans, let me go chapter 12. Yeah. I'm going to Romans chapter 12 tonight. I'm going to show y'all something. I have got off the lesson. I'm in the lesson, but I'm on something else in addition to the lesson. I'm sorry. This is the Holy I, Ghost. I it's the Holy Ghost you know. talking tonight, y'all. I, I tell you, when God speaks, I listen. Now obey the Spirit <laughs> of God. I'm gonna go to something on the on the book. Give me one second. Romans chapter 12. Romans not, chapter 12. Not okay. 12. I think it's 10. 10. Okay. Yeah. Romans 10. Give me a second. Romans chapter 10. It is 10. 10 and 1. He said, brethren, I desire. And that's chapter 9. I'm in the wrong chapter. Excuse me, I'm in 10. 10 what I'm looking for. Let me show you something right quick. What this thing doing? My, my tablet has been goofy tonight. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Not that. He went back to Romans chapter 1. What this thing doing? This thing really glitching tonight. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Let's see. <clears throat> it says, Brother, I desire in prayer for, for Israel. He said, Brother, I my, my heart desire in prayer for God for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. You hear that? Mm -hmm. So God is saying tonight, My desire for Israel is that they be saved. Right? Mm hmm. But there's another scripture I'm trying to find. My mind just went blank. I'm going to find it. I got to find the scripture because I don't want to be wrong with what I'm talking about. But I know God is speaking tonight by his spirit. I think it's chapter 8. Yeah, chapter 8, verse 1. So he says my prayer, and this is Paul talking to the church in Rome. See, his desire is for Israel to be saved, right? Right. So not only that, in chapter 1, I mean, chapter 8, verse 1 in Romans. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Uh -huh. He said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Yes. You know what condemnation is? Self judging, sentencing yourself to punishment, telling yourself you don't deserve God's grace. You never measure the God's standards of forgiveness. You're going to keep making the same mistakes. So the enemy wants you to get into condemnation. But he said, there is therefore now. And this is in conjunction with what he was talking about in chapter 7 about the two laws working in flesh, the law of sin and the, and the law of God. He talked about, he said, these, these members are at war. But then he says, in addition to all of this, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Spirit, yes. So if I walk according to the spirit, yes, then I'm not judged and condemned by God. Therefore, I don't have the right to judge and condemn myself according to the dictates of the flesh. And I went through that. I went through that when I first got there because that's where I was at. Because of where I was at, they were so hard on me that I felt I was not. This was not worth to even be called a child of God. It was not worth. This just made me feel. I I went through this scripture. 
And yes. I pointed to myself, there is no condemnation in you. For you walk out, you don't walk out the spirit, you walk out to the spirit. Even though they made me feel like you're not worthy. Are you ready? Are mm -hmm. you ready to do this in the church? You, if I say God called me, yep. you can judge me. You're right about that. And folk, church folk are the worst ones to attack you to make you feel like you're not even called by God. And that's what they did. I, yep. I ran They would beat you down. <laughs> He called them. He said they, they they become like vipers, ravaging wolves yeah, in the church. He wasn't talking about the, the the enemies. He was talking about the church folk. Yeah, and it wasn't. It was just that it was their whole family that was attacking me. Yeah, you know, it was the auntie, the daughter, the the pastor, and the wife, and it, I was like, what? I I had to run. And, and, and when exactly. I ran, when I ran, I I got to, I got to run. And when I started seeing this April, and that's when I—that's how I wind up at Faith Redeemed. I ran. <laughs> Amen. And and that's that's what we have to do because we don't have we don't have to sit and set up for vipers to keep biting us. And, I, <laughs> and then they were not only but they was attacking people that I was bringing to the church. You know why? Jealousy. Yeah. The enemy is is very very strong in the Jezebel spirit who uses jealousy in the church. They shoot they become and that jealous. person said that they would never come back to church again. And I'm having a hard time getting that person to come back because of what they did to, to that person when he came. You they just gotta pray for him. Dog demonic, you know, and he caught on to that. But I can take it. But he was new, fresh. You gotta pray for him. Pray that God yeah. continue to convict his heart to change and not, not allow that to affect him anymore. Because one thing about it, the enemy loves jealousy. He loves to yeah. devour God's people who's walking right before God because he wants you to quit. His whole purpose is make you quit. Do what God called yeah. you to do. Listen to this. It said, remember that death structures are built up upon the past and the purpose of this book is to expose and overthrow demonic powers that attempt to lock us into the past. Amen. I saw that. <laughs> That's exactly what's happening. The enemy knows I can use this death structure to yeah. lock you into a bondage of the past. You never walk forward in your freedom. Right. I like this part. See, this is the reason to make the past submit to, to the future. future. That's it. This is the season to make the past submit to the future. That's right. And this like is what that. God is saying to every one of us tonight. When you allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart, He causes the things of the past to be the things to build you and not tear you down. Right. Don't allow your mind to wander in the place of the past and get stuck in the past. But look at the past, learn from the past, reflect from the past, and move forward into your future destiny. Amen. Amen. Because the Word of God has the power and has the ability to deliver and set you free from the inside out. And overthrow the voices of the enemy and cause you to walk in victory and live in the freedom that Christ has given you through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. But your past does not define you. It does not define your future. And people, would, and people would throw your past up at you. They keep it before you, but you got to realize it's the past. And one thing about God, when people try to throw your past in your face, remind them of the devil's end in the end. How he's going to be defeated in the end. So though you slay me, I say it all the time, yet will I trust in him. I trust, amen. So you bring all amen. my past at me. I went through a season where everybody brought the past to me in my life a few years ago, and it hurt so bad. Yes. And it was like a dagger in my heart. Yes. And I had to go before God and get this weight off my shoulder. Yes. And I told God, I said, God, you know where you brought me from. You yes. delivered me. You set me free. Yes. And I don't care what the enemy has done to resurface all the negative things about me and my past. I thank you for your grace because you said you have taken my sins and my lawless deeds as far as the east is to the west to remember no more. Amen. Amen. And I said, God, you said, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. And by my loving kindness have I drawn thee. So God, you drew me to yourself. Therefore, I choose, y'all hear me tonight, I yes. choose to no longer be a victim of the past. Yes. 
Amen. You can throw it in my face all you want to, but I know what God has done for me. I know where I come from. I know I've been delivered. I've been sanctified through the Holy Ghost. And I know the sword and spirit will cut you like it cut me. So you want to come at me, bring it on. If you come against me, you better come correct. Because the word of God is my defense and my shield and my buckler. And nobody. Huh? That's it. the word. That's it. The truth. Because the word you cannot fight against. You can't fight against, but it's the truth. Paul so says like it like this. Not. He says like this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes, Lord. You hear that? Yes. yes. The spirit of life. Who's the spirit of life? The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Jesus Christ dwells in you. The, the spirit of life in Christ. It didn't say around Christ. Maybe it's possibility it might affect you. Maybe it might work, may not work. He didn't say that. For the law. What's the law? The creeds and the orders. They yeah. come from God's word. Not the law of man. Not the law of the church. But from the spirit of God. It's the spirit of life in Christ. Jesus. Yes. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes, he has. He said, for what the law could not do. Yo. My God, my God, my, my God. God my what God. the law could not do. Yes. And that it was weak through the flesh. He talked about the system and decrees of the world. The rules and regulations of the world. Yeah. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin. Listen to this. Condemn sin in the flesh. Yes, Lord. He condemned the power and the influence, the negative forces of sin that try to hold you at bay in captivity. He condemned it in the flesh. That it has no more power and control over you. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. That the righteousness, what's the righteousness? The uprightness in Christ Jesus. The right standards in Christ Jesus. Right. Of the law might be fulfilled in us. What law? The laws that creates the world had against you, Christ fulfilled it in himself. That you don't have to be victimized by it anymore. So you no longer walk according to the dictates of the flesh, the rules and regulations of the flesh, but now you walk after the Spirit. Amen. We're going to close right here. We're going to get back in our book next week. The Lord says the same. Amen. Try to oh, fix this. Fast. It did. It went fast. I, I didn't realize it's after seven already. I know. I, I, I'm, I'm got all raised up by the phone. I've been for some more. Okay. Then he says, verse five: For verse they five. that are after the flesh, listen to me. This is why people attack you to church. It's why people attack you to job. What what chapter are you in? Same chapter, chapter eight. Chapter eight. Okay. Verse five. Verse this is the reason why the enemy hates your anointing. He hates your calling. He wants to attack you to make you doubt who God called you to be. Yeah, yeah. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. The flesh yes. But they that are after the spirit, spirit. the things of the spirit. spirit yes. So in other words, the leadership, the governing rule of the Holy Spirit controls your thought life, controls your behavior, controls your responses, controls your attitude, controls your nature. Yes. Because you're walking according to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and not the things of the flesh. People who are carnal, who are fleshly, going to continue to devour and fight and try to stop you from walking in your purpose. That's true. That is so true. He said in verse 6. In the church. This is what he's talking about, the church. The to church. be calmly minded in the church. is death. To be calmly minded is death. To be calmly yeah. minded is death. That means fleshly. Those yeah. who mind the things of flesh, he said to be calmly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is death to the flesh. To be spiritually minded is death to the flesh. You hear what I said? 
He said to be carnally minded to death, right? So to be spiritually minded to death to the flesh. But it's also life and peace to the believer. I got it backwards. I got to see it backwards. That's it. I think you saying that. So to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And it's death to the flesh. Death to the flesh. Okay. Because the carnal mind <laughs> is enmity against God. That means hostile. An enemy of God. It goes against God. fights against God. It fights against order. It fights against rule and regulation. It fights against God's decree. It fights against God's word. For it is not subject to the law of God. You hear that? That's yeah. why people act the way they do. When you're fleshly, you're not going to submit to God's order. That's you're not going to submit to God's word. When he says, because to be calmly minded is enmity with God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So it's not going to submit to God's order, his decree, his mm -hmm. rules and regulations, his word, mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit, his leadership, his governing authority, is not going to submit because it's not designed to submit to it. Okay. The flesh is, is supposed to be an enemy of God because Adam fell in the Garden of Eden which caused the flesh to become an enemy of God. But when you were born anew in the spirit, you've been given a new identity. Yes. A new character, a new nature, a new attitude, a new heart. A new spirit that you would be pleasing sacrifice unto God. New everything. I mean, when I when I New everything got back in church, I, I I go to my sister, she said, she said, You glowing, you look different. That's it. People will see the difference in you. And she did, and it's like I hadn't even noticed that my own I felt different. Yep, people will see that. it. They'll see it. They'll see the difference in you. So I'm going to close right here at this verse. Well, I'm going to stop at verse 8. Verse 8, okay. It says, so then they that are in the flesh. I hope yeah. you're listening tonight. That's the drug addiction, the alcoholism, the fornication, the idolatry, the homosexuality. It's all these different sinful desires of the flesh. Yes. So then... They that are in the flesh, ill behavior, unforgiveness, hatred and bitterness, lawlessness, wickedness that spurns from the heart, can not please God. That's right. That's it right there. Can not. Can not. Please God. But then he says, but ye are not in the flesh. Every born again believer is not right. in the flesh. Right. But in the spirit. In the spirit. Amen. If so be that the spirit of God is predicated on the spirit of God dwelling in you. If you got the spirit of God dwelling in you, then you are not subject to the flesh. Amen. Amen. You're not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of God or the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Yes. I'm going to stop at that verse. If you do not have the Spirit of God dwelling in you, you're not of his. Amen. And God is calling Amen. us to repentance. He's, he's calling order, restructure back in our lives as Amen. a body of Christ. We all need to come to repentance. We all need to come back to the place of forgiving one another. We need to come and walk in divine order. Upright before God. Justly. Allow your heart to be purged from iniquity and purified by the Spirit of God with clean water and filled the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee when you learn how to listen to the voice of God, you shut down the lies of the enemy and the power Amen. of God is predicated in your heart upon your obedience to Amen. follow the Holy Spirit leadership and submit. Amen. The key is submission. Yes, if there's yes, no yes. submission, there will never be any divine order in your life to walk up right before God. Amen? 
You can read the rest of this chapter when you get a chance. It's really a good chapter to read. Romans chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10. Read those chapters. It's a lot to learn in those chapters. I guarantee when you do, you're going to find yourself in this word being convicted. But when you get convicted, realize God loves you with an everlasting love. And with a loving kindness, have he drawn you to himself unto repentance. Amen. He can restore you back to a place of holiness and righteousness. Don't make excuses because you have a bad habit. Don't make excuses because it seems like you can make the same mistake. Do not make excuses. Just repent. He knows the heart of the individual when they're sincere in repentance. So that's the posture of the heart. The posture. The heart posture is true repentance. Coming yeah. back to God in uprightness before him. Right. Recognizing that I need God in my life. I need the spirit to walk up right before me. And to keep me in his will. When you allow the spirit of God to bring you to the place where you listen and obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. With a song the children sing. Trust and obey. For there's no other way. Trusting in Jesus is the way. So when you trust in Jesus and obey him, you find yourself walking right before God in divine order. Amen. Amen. We're going to stop right here tonight and I pray that you have heard the word of God tonight and it has pricked your heart and, and challenging you to examine your heart to see where you are falling short in the faith and repent. Just repent. Ask God to forgive you. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness, the word tells us. He's not holding <laughs> against you. He takes your slate. He takes your slate. I lost my notepad. I had a notepad over here. I'm going to show you the illustration. But I'll tell you why I use this little card I got right here. So what he'll do, he'll take, I'm going to symbolize that this is an eraser, okay? he take the slate, and he'll take it, all the things that were written against you of sin and iniquity, Condemnation, rebellion, stubbornness, pride, haughtiness, arrogancy, everything. He goes like this. He erases. Just erases everything. <laughs> everything against you, he's erasing it. Yeah. Tonight, he's erasing your slate. He said, once you repent, you ain't yeah. going to go back to it no more. It's dead. What's dead is dead. You ever see anybody go to the graveyard and dig up a body? No. Nope. It, it, it don't work. They ain't come back to life. Once you're dead, you're dead. You did. So the sinful bad habits in your life have been put to death. And when you realize they've been put to death, then I have a new life living in me through repentance. So once I repent, I have been restored as if I never fallen. That's the love of God for you and me tonight. Amen. Pray, pray, pray. Let's say pray, 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 and keep on praying. Amen. You just certainly helped me tonight. <laughs> Amen. So you Thank walk you, upright Lord. before God. Keep loving on God. Let yeah. God love on you through his word. And that's why I tell God, I said, God, I just need you to love yes. on me. Like just I love on me. I need you. That's it. I do. That's it. When you love on God, he loves on you in return. That's so, what I wanted to do. So you're mm -hmm. on here tonight and you realize that I've been messing up. I've been making mistakes. Have a bad habit, some strongholds. I've been trying to shake it over and over. I have strongholds in my life. I'm going to keep it real. I have strongholds in my life. And every day, I'm being delivered. Amen. Just keep Me it real. Too. Keep it God. It's all God. All I'm being delivered. All God. So, when we identify and don't try to fake it and shake it until I make it, you heard that before, right? Fake yeah. it till you make it. That's a lie from the devil. God didn't tell you to fake it till you make it. He said, repent and walk right before him. So, tonight, if you're one of those could be going through the motions and you know you've been going through the motions and you haven't really given your heart to Jesus Christ in repentance, you might be born again and you haven't surrendered. It's okay. He loves you. He said, I, I ain't turning my back on you. I love you everlasting love. Something everlasting is everlasting. Something has no end. And God says tonight, I'm married to the backslider. He says, I will abundantly pardon your ways. So you come to him tonight in repentance and you realize that I messed up, I made a mistake. You might be one that don't even know Jesus. Never gave your life to Jesus Christ. God says, you know what? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. 
All you got to do is confess your mouth, believe your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You can be saved. Just that simple. And when you realize that with the mouth, confession is made, with mm -hmm. the heart, I, I'm drawn to salvation, God saves you. So tonight, if you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, you might be one who don't know Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. It's a simple prayer. We all repent. Every week we repent. I want to know I need to repent every day. I do. Because I'm always having an evil thought in my mind. I'm just keeping it to God. We all have evil thoughts in the end. Right here. Amen. Amen. And God is saying he want to purge it out. Amen. When you identify the root cause of the evil thought, repent. So I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus. I come to you, Lord God, acknowledging that I've sinned against thee and thee only have I sinned and done evil in your sight. And I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for all my sins. Sins of thought, yes. sins of the mouth, mm. sins of action, sins of the attitude. Forgive me, God, for all my sins. Yes, and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for giving me another chance. Not a second chance, but another chance. No. And I thank you for saving me, restoring me, reviving me, purifying me, saturating me in your anointing, that I can be clean in your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Simple prayer. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You just got cleansed. You just got delivered. You just got set free. Whatever it is that holds you in captivity, it's not yours no more. You gave Amen. it up. You just gave it up. Amen. Every sin of the heart, you just gave it up through repentance. Amen. Now walk in it. Walk Amen. in your newness of life. Walk in your repentful heart. Every day is a heart of repentance. Every day is a surrendered life. Every day is a yielded life. And we have to release ourselves to the will of God every day. That every thought that's not like Christ, I cast down every imagination, every, every reasoning of thought, every attitude of, of the sinful nature, and I bring those thoughts to subjection to Jesus Christ. Amen. That I can yield to his authority and walk upright before him in holiness and righteousness. The word says, without holiness, what it says, no man can see the Lord. So you're holy. I'm holy. I may not look like it. You may not look like it. Because it's not about the outward expression. It's about the inward expression. Amen. The holy still from the heart and the radiance outside of you when people can sense the Spirit of God in you and be Amen. drawn to you by the Spirit of God. Amen. I remember years ago in my younger days of ministry, I was wondering why so many men was always attracted to me I used to be in a homosexual life. And, and, and God had to deliver me, right? And so people I was attracted to me. They're like, why? And the Lord said, because the anointing. I had pastors and bishops who knew what I was going through, came to me, told me the word of God, and said, you're going to be attracting many people to you because of the anointing on your life. And you know what? I did. Attracted many people to me because of the anointing. Some got saved. Some never came to Christ. I've fallen many times. And God still raised me up again. I messed up. Scott, God still cleaned me up. Say, I don't, I don't like to sugarcoat and hide stuff. Because if you hide behind your sin, you never be healed and delivered. And when God That's starts true. showing me myself that we fall, but he picks us up. That's right. That's where the condemnation has been rebuked and cast away from you. So you don't have the right to let nobody else come to you and condemn you. Because you mess up. Amen. It's okay. It's okay you fall. But guess what? <laughs> he still loves you. He still cares about you. He still embraces you. He still holds on to you. All because of grace and mercy. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not yourself. It's a gift of God. Not a work, so it's any man should boast. So your works can't measure up. Okay, yeah, how much right. you try to do to work out your soul's salvation, it never measures to God's standards. That's true. Only because of grace and mercy in Christ Jesus. Where we find true deliverance and salvation. Yeah. Amen. 
So I pray you being cursed tonight, being rich in your spirit. Share this line with somebody else. Invite others to join in. You want to sow a seed in, in the ministry? Sow a seed. If you do or you don't, it's okay. I'm still blessed and highest favor of God. And one thing about me, I don't beg for nothing. I just put it out there. If you want to sow a seed to be a blessing to the ministry, you can. If you don't, God bless you anyway. I pray God blessing to continue to increase upon your life. I pray God continue to reign upon your life with favor and shower you in his goodness. God bless you, cousin Kenny. God bless you, Pastor Emery. Amen. Hallelujah. So I thank you all for coming on tonight. I pray this has been enriching in your spirit. I pray it has said something has been said a dare to inspire, to edify, and build you up in your faith. To know your worth. Know your value. I'm trying to quit, y'all. I'm trying. It just I, I'm on fire tonight. That's all right. I'm listening. You got to continue to allow the Holy Spirit to ignite your fire. Yes. Don't let the enemy put your fire out. Don't let anybody yes. come and judge you and put you in bondage. You know who you are. Know your value. Know who God called you to be. Who cares what they think about you? Who cares what they talk about you and say against you? And evil falsely for his name's sake. The word, he's a pray for them. Yes, yeah. When you pray for your enemies, he's a love your enemies and pray for them. And bless those who persecute you and say all men are evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Amen. He didn't say yes, your name. Lord. He didn't say my name. His name's sake. And guess what happened? Blessings flow yeah. because of the obedience to yeah. pray for you. He's a bless your enemy. You know what God does? I got this revelation. Long time I'm gonna quit after that. I'm really, I promise you, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna quit after this. God showed me something when you pray blessings over your enemy, you take the punishment, you take the judgment, the condemnation, the resentment, the unforgiveness, the hatred you have towards your enemy off yourself. And you put it on God. You allow God to deal with your enemy according to his will. And guess what God does? He bless your enemy by bringing him to condemnation and conviction to repent. He said, I wish that none would perish for all come to repentance. So when yeah. he does, he convicts their hearts to come to you for forgiveness. Okay. But check this out. I ask God to forgive me for my enemy. I don't want to hold it against anybody. I'm like that so, too. so God will forgive you and you take the requirements of the punishment off of yourself and put it back on the enemy. Yeah. So if they never repent to you, they got to stand for God for themselves. And that's, that's basically what I'm going through. I guess a whole lot of us are. People oh, don't yeah. ask for forgiveness no more. Absolutely. But you got to forgive because you got to release yourself. You got to release and yourself. I, and I, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm like, ask God, you know, just what I, my prayer is that all things work out the good for all of my family. Yes, it does. You know, whatever we go through, all, not just for me, but for all of us, that we all will, you know, it work out for our good and we'll be able to get this thing back on track. Absolutely. You know, but I, 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 I'm, I'm trusting God. Yes. Hallelujah. Because what I try, it don't work. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It we have to give work. it God's hand. Let Him handle it. I try. So, I try. Okay, God, I'm done. So the solution to everybody's issue tonight it's is God. trust God. Trust God. That's not right. yourself. Not your family. Not your best friend. Not your neighbor. Not your church, not your pastor, not your leaders. You trust in God wholeheartedly. We never just had that that Sunday school lesson. Trust in God. That's it. Trust in no God. No confidence in man. Put no confidence in man, because man will fail you. Yeah, I'm a witness time. of that. I'm a witness of that. Many times I've been failed. I've been let down and been cast aside and everything. Ostracized all that. Well, you know what? Sometimes I fail my own self, Pastor. We fail ourselves sometimes. You're right about yeah. that, my sister. But I pray you all continue to be encouraged tonight. Be encouraged tonight. I'm all right. I'm all right. Amen. God is, God is bringing me through. I feel it. Yes, he is. Yes, he I is. I feel him pulling me back. Because I tell you, I, I was gone. But God, I wanted to come back. I didn't want to be out there like that. I didn't like myself. And that's the desire of the heart, to come back to God wholeheartedly and watch him change things in our lives. So you all have a good night. You too. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord shower favor upon you. Lord, may the Lord give you peace. In Jesus' name, till next week. Lord, say the same. We'll come back again, 6 o'clock hour, to continue where we left off tonight, talking about Delilah. Amen. So if you don't have this book, get the book, Breaking Threefold Demonic Court. 
how to discern the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. How to discern the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. And watch God begin to show you something about yourself in the lessons. Every lesson I've been teaching has been making me stronger. I've been elevated in the anointing. I feel it. I feel the change. I know the difference. I've been elevated in the revelation of God's word in the anointing because of what I've been doing to submit to God to teach his word the way I have been teaching. And I thank God for that increase. You all have an increase coming upon your life. You walk in your purpose for purpose. Don't let nobody discourage you from walking in your divine order that God has placed your life to walk in. Amen. Amen. And you all have a great night until next week. Shalom. May the peace of God rest upon you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. All right. Good night, my sister. Good night. All right. May God bless you. Have a good night.